of the Rebbe. You can unmute yourself. Dr. Raghav, please unmute yourself. I I cannot unmute you from here. So please unmute yourself. You can do that from your from from your device. Hello? Hello? Hello. Okay, is there anyone else who wants to practice the scenario, doctors? Please message me if you want to practice. Yes. Dr. Raghav. Okay, Dr. Raghav, I am here. Okay, let's start. Oh, yes, okay. Okay, let's start again, please. Can you see the slide? Can you see the scenario slide, doctor? Yes, I see, I see. Okay, let's start then. Yes, okay. Hey, hello, Mr. Sam. Uh, nice to meet you. I am Dr. Rarif, one of the doctors in the heart clinic today. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, uh, we are together today to discuss some issue related to the uh, related to your heart problem and uh, related to heart problem. Uh, is that okay with you? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so before I start, I would like to know uh, how you feel now, uh, Mr. Sam. Well, I feel uh, I feel very bad actually, doctor, because um. I don't know, I feel so down. Yeah, uh, I am really sorry to hear that. So, um, how much you know so far about your condition? Uh, you know that your heart condition before was stabilized on medication. So, how much you know so far about your condition? 
Well, I, as far as I know, is that eight months ago, I was admitted uh, to hospital because uh, the doctor said that I'd had, I had some, um, I don't know, some infection which uh, affected my heart and it caused my heart to become very weak. And at that time, um, the doctors kept me in the intensive care unit. They gave me so many medications through my bloodstream and after that they told me just to go on all these tablets and they didn't even tell me till when yes well well uh you know as i know that you have weak heart and really uh, we give you some medication uh, to uh, keep your heart working well and to stabilize your condition so um so uh, what uh, so? Uh, what do you think? What uh, what do you think about the uh, the cause of deterioration of your condition? Uh, is that the progression of the disease, or there is something wrong? Um, so I'm just uh, uh, I'm just wanted to ask you, what do you think is the cause of your deterioration of the condition of your condition? You mean before or now? No, no, the current situation now, yes. Well, I don't know. I'm not the doctor. Well, I will, well. So, uh, um, I am not, uh, I am not judging you at all. Uh, I am here today to know exactly what is the problem or uh, why you are not stable, why your condition is deteriorating. Um, why your condition is deteriorated. So uh, uh, I know that we give you some medication to uh, continue this medication. So uh, let me ask you, uh, are you taking your medication regularly? Yes. Well, sometimes, okay? That's to be fair. I take them sometimes, not always. Yeah. So uh, uh, why you not take your medication regularly? you forget to medication or you are worried from the side effect or no. why you do? no because i think you're hiding something from me i think these medications are a big joke you know i don't know why you're lying like that i have been searching on the internet and i found that i need a heart transplant surgery but you're avoiding to give that to me do you have an idea how that may affect me doctor i have two young boys and if I died, who's going to take care of them? You know that I need a new heart, but you're not offering me that option. Instead, you're, I don't know, you're just deceiving me with taking all these tablets, take all your tablets, take all your tablets all the time. And you see, I'm not going to be as I used to be before. My ultimate med treatment and the solution of, for my problem is a new heart transplant surgery. And no, nobody even mentioned that to me. Yeah. That's why I stopped I taking the drugs because they are useless. Yes, I, I understand what you are saying. Uh, let me uh, let me address your concern first of all. Uh, you are you are talking about surgery and about the heart operation. Uh, is that okay? Um, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, the heart operation is not. Uh, the heart operation is not useful in this uh, in your condition. I, I am not expert in the in the heart surgery, but what I know what I know is that uh, is that uh, uh, what I know is that uh, many people and many patients uh, when they are uh, adherent to their medication, their heart function is improving by time. It's improving by time. So uh, let me ask you, uh, do you know the consequence of not taking your medication? Well, even if there was a consequence, what's going to happen? Well, I mean, it's not going to become worse than my condition. Doctor, I'm dying here. Yeah, I am sorry. I am sorry. I, I am sorry to hear that. Uh, uh, we are. Uh, we will do our best to manage your condition. Uh, but let me uh, explain to you that something very, very important. 
uh, I would like to speak to speak with you honestly that uh, your medication, your medication, if you are compliant to your medication, your heart, your heart, your heart condition will be improved. And you will, and this improvement will reflect in your daily activity and in your exercise tolerance. And you will, uh, you can live a near normal life. What's your proof? What is what is that? What's your proof? On what basis are you telling me that? Yes, 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 um, yes. Um, we have strong evidence. And we have many patients in our clinic improving, uh, improving, improving on this medication. And unfortunately, uh, the heart operation is not uh, the optimum, the optimum plan of management at time being. Why? Because your heart is, yes, because your heart is too weak now. So uh, your heart is too weak. And um, uh, your heart is too weak, and we have to uh, make our heart um, bumping well by taking our medication and stabilize our condition before thinking of any advanced treatment. Also, I would like to inform you that uh, the surgery is a big, is a major operation, and it is uh, this operation are without this operation is without. Uh, uh, you know that the heart operation is a very major operation and you will uh, expose yourself to major complication, like complication from anesthesia, complication from the major surgery. So, uh, so uh, the heart surgery is not uh, the, uh, the, optimum, uh, the optimum treatment plan at the time being. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, I would like to speak with you honestly. That um, if you are not, uh, if you are not, uh, if you are not adherent to your medication, I am afraid to say that your heart will be uh, will be more weak. And I am I am worried that things may be going to be going wrong. You have and two minutes. Left. Two minutes left. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I, unfortunately, you may die. So, um, uh, so um, I would like to ask you some social question, if you don't mind. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, what is the impact of your symptoms and your disease in your daily activity and life? Well, as you can see, I have turned into a patient, someone who's diseased. And I used to be an active uh, uh, businessman and uh, lately it's very difficult to move around a lot to use the stairs and you know the the busy lifestyle I'm not able to cope with it anymore <laughs> so I miss my job I am jobless now yeah. okay this is the one yeah. thing first yeah. thing the second thing is that yeah. I've turned into more isolated person I used to share my time with my family my sons my wife but nowadays I feel that I don't have the uh, i mean i'm lacking energy to be there with them so i'm more drawn away detached from them that's also i mean it's also another problem besides that i'm thinking a lot about what's going to happen if i died and i just left behind two young boys who's going to take care of them yeah i understand all what you are saying uh, let me uh, let me uh, inform you something. If you take your medication, time out, uh, you, Okay, time yeah, out. Okay. Yeah, and you didn't finish yet. Um, however, I'll give you two minutes to finish it. What you would have wanted to say if you had more time? Okay, just two minutes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Go on, so, please. Yeah, okay, so I would like to inform you that if you take your medication regularly, your heart condition will be improved or even stabilized. Uh, and uh, and uh, we can't guarantee that uh, if you take your medication regularly, we can stop uh, the, uh, the progress of your disease at least. 
we can progress the progress of of uh, and this will impact in improvement of your symptoms and uh, uh, you will notice a great improvement in your exercise and in your ability to uh, to work to work and to uh, to be with your family so uh, uh, I want to, I want to explore another something. Uh, do you have any problem in your medication? Like you develop any side effect, any bad effect? No, but there are so many. Yes, the medication are so many. So, uh, uh, would you like to? Uh, if we can combine the medication, if we can combine the medication uh, together, uh, this will be useful for you. Okay, but I want a, a, a heart surgery, doctor. Please, that's that's going to yeah. make me very, very relieved. Yes, yes, uh, I understand your concern about the surgery. Uh, I think the. Uh, uh, Robin, your two minutes are out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, I will give you my feedback over your performance. Okay, first of all, as you can see. This is about chronic disease, eight months duration, okay? Of eight months duration. So first of all, again, just practice what you have on the block, okay? We will apply the things I have been explaining for you previously on the scenario. So first of all, as you said, you greeted the patient, confirmed ID, introduced yourself, your role, you established report, you set the agenda, and you assessed my understanding about my disease. And I told you that I got an infection eight months ago and I was admitted in the ICU and I received treatment. And after that, the doctors discharged me on all these medications, okay? So here it's a chronic disease. Ask him how he feels today. Okay, maybe he has pulmonary edema now. Maybe the heart failure is decompensated, for example. He, does he have any ankle swelling? You're not taking history here, all right? It's not history taking, but it's assessing any updates. How is, how is the patient doing today, okay? And if uh, ask him just how are you doing today? Do you feel better or do you feel worse or no change at all, okay? For example, maybe you need to admit him if he has uh, deter, uh, deterioration or in his condition. Okay, so just briefly, don't take history. Ask him, do you feel any changes since the last time you were here? Um, any difficulty breathing or something? No, doctor. Okay, that's okay. Then move on to assess uh, if he has, uh, of course, again, any patient with chronic illness, you have to ask about uh, uh, his drugs. Are you taking a, your drugs? Are you taking, do you feel any problems? Do you have any problems from the medications you're taking? Okay, do you know the drugs you're taking? No doctor, but there are so many. Okay, um, are you taking them as prescribed for you regularly on time? Well, as I said, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. He asked me why, why here for questions, why I told him that I feel that I'm being received here I uh, I've, I've found on the internet that I need a heart transplant surgery and you are um, not offering me that surgery. So he, he, he's angry and um, so we, here it's, it's your task to explain the situation to the patient, okay? So here it's important that when you said that um, on the pills you're going to improve and I told you on what basis, what's your proof? Okay, so here, uh, the proof is in the card itself. There is an improvement in, in his eco. Okay, he is non-compliant with his drug and he's not taking them regularly. And despite that, there was an improvement in his eco. Last time it was 27, today it's 39. Okay, so there is an improvement. So here, this is the point, this is a, uh, a point you should use to reassure the patient that even you're, you said that you're not taking your medications regularly, but there was a, a noticeable change or significant change towards better. Your heart muscle uh, uh, function has uh, improved and uh, it showed that it's becoming, performing uh, better in comparison to how it used to be before. Uh, and you said that you don't feel uh, any worsening in your symptoms. So that's a good thing. And then reassure him that heart transplant surgery is kept and saved for people who has poor, a more poorer heart function than yours. You are not at the category of people who need a heart transplant surgery because you can make it better on the drugs. 
So here, encourage him to take his medications. And if there is any problem with your drugs, if you feel any problems well, in taking them or something, me and my team are here, all here to help you and support you to, to do that. Okay, I have good news for you, which is that there is an improvement in today's eco. We noticed that your heart is doing better. And despite that you were not taking your treatments regularly, but we expect that if you do so in the future, uh, we expect that it's going to um, uh, become improved. Okay, now he's, he was insisting on the heart transplant surgery. We explained to him that he is not a candidate for heart transplant surgery, but it's kept for people who have a poorer heart function than him that will reassure him. Okay, he needed to hear that from you. All right, so that was the key point uh, that you needed to explain to the patient. You used some medical jargons, you said deterioration, okay, uh, instead say that it worsening, okay, is the more uh, um, slang or layman word. Uh, his eco results, uh, you should explain that. And uh, I just do, did that, I explained it. Reassure that uh, in the re uh, eco results, he got better. Explain the situation, we already did that. You said the word adherent, okay, can say more strict or more, okay, I mean, I felt that it's more, uh, a little bit formal or medical word. Uh, but it's okay, adherent, I will accept it, okay, as a word. After that, you go on by, uh, assess compliance with his medication and explain the importance of staying on these medications. And if there is any problem with his drugs, just uh, make make it better. He said that there are too many. So if you can, if you take a look at the scenario, maybe we can combine two drugs in one pill, for example. Let's say um, maybe the um, the uh, furosemide and ramipril maybe can be combined ACE inhibitor and, and Sometimes it depends on the scenario, okay? It's not, I'm just giving you an example on how to think uh, to improve the uh, compliance of his medications if he complained that there are so many, okay? If he's forget, if, forgetting to take his pills, then uh, just um, offer uh, or suggest maybe if we involve his wife, uh, and he said, because he said that he, his wife and his sons and he's not spending enough time, or else you ask him, do you have a family? Who do you live with? Do you have a family to, where you live with, okay, someone to help you? Okay, would you mind if we involve with your, uh, for example, uh, wife, she can help you, reminding you, or if he has side problems, she can help you uh, to, to be adherent, as you said, with your medications. That another, that, that's another example, okay? So uh, again, establish and understand the implication of the treatment. It's important for, for the heart muscle to strengthen and keep its function and uh, recover a bit. Maybe ask you, doctor, will I be cured? Okay, so here, don't give any promises. You say that, uh, we expect that it will be improved, but to which extent or to be cured uh, as before, uh, this is a difficult question to ask. But however, um, uh, we expect that, although there might be an improvement, but a 100% cure uh, is something that um, I, I, I cannot. Uh, um, so my idea, it's, it's unlikely to be cured. So we can say that it's not a curable disease, but uh, we expect that when you are more adherent with your medications and, and so uh, we expect that you will do better, okay? You, you will improve, but don't give promises about uh, uh, being cured or something, especially if it was a chronic uh, non-reversible disease, all right? Uh, what consequences will happen if he didn't take the treatment? He will get worse, he, uh, the heart will be very weak, and that will lead to accumulation of uh, water in his organs, in the lung, in, the, in his tummy. And it will be very difficult for him to breathe and he will be more short of breath and uh, his um, general functional status will be impaired. As you said, okay, uh, the reverse will happen if he was more adherent to his medication. Now, the important thing here in chronic illness scenarios is, is the social questions. This is a chronic disease. Okay, reassure, find solutions for his problem, the combination of pills and so, explain the risks of non-compliance, address social, job, pregnancy, if it's a lady, okay, address social issues, job issues, driving issues, depression, etc., and respond to them, okay? He seemed, he was, he, he sound, he was sounding a, a bit depressed, okay? He said that I used to be a businessman and I'm more isolated, so you should ask about his uh, changes and changes in his sleep uh, in his food, f uh, eating habits, sleeping habits, um, how he's spending the time, his time, leisure time, and so on, okay? 
and then just um, if he feels if he has any of these uh, symptoms of depression, then um, just suggest that uh, he should see your colleague. He's a psychiatrist, and he how to explain a psychiatrist? Well, regarding the word mood problems, okay, you don't have to use the word mood mood problems because it's not used in the UK practice. Okay, you, you can just say the psychiatrist and. He is the doctor who treat people, who see people who have similar, similar problems like yours, okay? That's how to explain the, the psychiatrist, the word psychiatry, to, um, instead of saying a medical jargon, okay? I respond to them. Any social issues, if he needs the help of the social workers, he left his job because he's unable to leave the house. He's becoming more housebound. Okay, so give solutions. Uh, okay, where, how are you doing regarding your income? Are you financially supported? No, I'm not. I left my job, okay? Um, then um, we can involve the social workers here to help you. There are different means. For example, you said that you are a businessman. Uh, did you ever consider, for example, um, running your business from home online? Okay, uh, that's an option. Did you ever think about that? Uh, do you have the facility to afford for that or else? However, we will involve the social workers and they will help you. Me and my team are here, here to help you today. Okay? Reassure the patient. He came, he was thinking that he was dying. So you gave him good news about that he's doing fine. That will encourage him to add her to, more to his medications. Okay? And then you address, assess, you, 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 you seek the, his concerns and how this disease is affecting his life and you provide the solutions to solve them. Okay? Regarding his job, social. Regarding uh, 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 driving issues, we, I mean, it's not very related to driving here. Okay, um, there are some issues, uh, heart issues relating to fitness to drive. I'm explaining this in more detail in the fitness to drive lecture in the course, okay? So these were just some examples on how this disease may affect his life. Sometimes a similar scenario, okay? Uh, maybe for a lady, for example, postpartum or postpartum, uh, myocarditis, okay, Post postpartum uh, cardiomyopathy, sorry, postpartum or peripartum cardiomyopathy is another scenario with a similar uh, um, issues, okay, so here you have to, um, I'll get back to that in a few seconds, just to, to keep things in, a, in, a, in sequential. After that, educate the patient about alarming signs and symptoms, if the, in, if you developed, and he's doing fine today, but tell him that if he developed when you finish the, are about to finish the interview. Tell him if you develop any chest uh, uh, pain or shortness of breath or any uh, new symptoms, please come to the emergency department, okay? Then the management plan was to change some drugs and ad adjust the uh, number of tablets and so, um, and then any concerns, solve his concerns. You ask about effect on life and provided support. Summarize with your suggested plan and end the consultation with the three questions I already told you about. Here, it's important to give him the contact details of the rehabilitation, cardiac rehabilitation services, okay? It's also important to give him the contact details of uh, uh, the um, uh, nurse <sighs> clinic, okay? Uh, if uh, the next appointment, when you need to see him, for example, if uh, the, the contact details of the social services, for example, all right, you have to uh, see what things needed in your scenario. So this is a general approach. If you're talking, for example, about a patient who needs occupational mm -hmm. therapist help or physiotherapy, you should also give the, him the contact details of all these. All right, so again, this scenario may be, you may get the similar scenario for a patient with peripartum or a postpartum cardiomyopathy. So when the patient comes to you in the clinic, ask her where the baby is, how is the baby doing, okay? She had heart failure after, let's change the name here. Let's uh, call her um, Sarah Williams, for example, 27 years old, peripartum or postpartum, cardiomyopathy. So the same ejection fraction in the medications and everything, okay? So now here, one more thing you need to include is to ask her, how is, it, is this uh, disease affecting a, a, a mom, a new mom? Okay, she have breastfeeding to do. She also has, uh, she has a baby, new baby, she will, who will keep her staying late at night. Uh, she need to take care of this baby 24 seven. Who is helping her out with that? And she is having heart failure. She's taking water pills and she needs to use the bathroom and she's dyspneic and she's, 
So she needs help, she needs support. Can she do that alone? If not, we can get the help and support of, for example, we can involve the social services and so on. She's here today in the clinic, okay? Ask her where the baby is, uh, who she left the baby with, okay? Does she need any help with someone to take care of the baby? Maybe she needs a babysitter to help her out, okay? If there is any family member to help her with the baby. If not, where is, her, where is the husband? She is a single mom, for example, okay? So this is how you address the concerns and solve them to meet the patient's requirements and what they need okay this was just an example and also don't forget to advise her not to conceive again because of this problem because her heart is weak it's not going to tolerate in her pregnancy and so on okay so this lady refer her to her gp or the gynecologist in order to make sure that she's taking uh, uh, um, uh, contraceptive um, medication or something uh, if she's sexually active in order to avoid getting pregnant again okay because as the scenario says says maybe it's uh, she came to you after two months or three months or whatever okay so this is just to give you some examples this is the end of our session today okay it's very difficult to tell you about you see a scenario is full of uh, uh, details full of steps as you can see here in the block and there are some details inside the scenario. My goal in my course is to give you all the tools to tackle your scenarios, okay? Give you guidelines, give you steps. Whenever you face that step, okay, you understand now what you need to do, okay? So by that, you can meet whatever scenario you get, okay? I'll check the chat box here if you have any questions because we have to end this meeting. No, there is, uh, here is the question. Is there any option for heart transplant here? No, there is no option for heart transplantation here. Why? Because the patient, basically heart transplant surgeries are offered for patients who have ejection fraction, which is low, even less than 35% or even lower, okay? What is against heart transplant surgery is the improvement in the eco. It was 27, now it's rising to 40. And the patient is not adherent, he's not compliant with his medications. So here, with more compliance, it's expected to rise even above 40, 45, 50, we don't know. And he's even symptomatically, he doesn't have any complications or symptoms of decompensated heart failure. So the aim here is to reassure the patient that he is doing better. The heart transplant surgery is not option for him because he doesn't need it, okay, at least for now, okay, and encourage him to keep on taking his medications. You gave him a controlled hope here, according to the situation, okay? You didn't tell him that he's doing super fine and his heart function is nearly back to normal. No, no, no. You gave him just the situation as it is, okay? So that's the aim, to encourage him to stick to his treatments. You explain the importance of these medications and he told you what's the proof. The proof is that today's ECHO was better, although he's not taking his medications regularly. But we expect if you do add her to your medications regularly, then you will be improved on uh, drugs. Well, doctor, I don't want to take these drugs because they are so, okay, why? Because there are so many, then solve that issue. Keep him under a regular follow-up, okay? Give him contact details if he has any queries or anything, just to be in contact with you, okay? Eight months ago means that he is not coming to his follow-up visits, all right? So, um, that's the end of our session today. I hope you find you found it uh, helpful. Uh, there are other scenarios about non-compliance and other scenarios about chronic illnesses and uh, scenario by scenario with its related issues. Of course, I didn't ask Dr. Raghab what's the ethical issues here. It's respecting patient's autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, okay? And that's all. Uh, justice is not very much applying here in the scenario, okay? So, um, uh, it's, it was a, ethically, it was a straightforward scenario, no tricks here, okay, no legal issues in this scenario. Basically, it was about communication and your judgment about the management plan, okay? Thank you everybody for watching and listening. This uh, session uh, is recorded. The scenario explanation is recorded in a separate video and the uh, lecture PowerPoint presentation, uh, which I started with, uh, and the approaches I explained is recorded in a separate lecture. Uh, I will share them uh, later. And uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please post them on the WhatsApp group and follow us. Uh, keep tuned. 
uh, I would just want you um, to wanted to remind you that our course for uh, August is starting on August 15th. Um, you will find the schedule, uh, pair lectures, and uh, uh, all the information you need on the uh, on our whatsapp groups and the telegram group uh, if you have any queries or you are interested about registration please contact our course admin dr ibrahim hassan uh, on the whatsapp number and um thank you very much good night thank you so much thank you thank you for watching most welcome goodbye thank you most welcome doctor my pleasure.